Hi everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're taking a look at the 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit. Now, if you've seen our 2013 Jeep Grand Cherokee video, or if you've taken a look at the 2013 reviews or videos out there, then stay tuned for this one, because the 2014 Grand Cherokee has been thoroughly revised for 2014 model year. It's not a complete redesign, but it might just as well be. For 2014, the Grand Cherokee gets a completely new nose, and the Summit and the Overland models, which have now been separated from one another, get these unique HID headlamps. In the Summit model, they steer. In the Overland model, they don't. The reason for this little black trim strip right here is that Chrysler puts a headlamp washer in this little cutout right there. If you get a Laredo model, you don't get the same headlamp module that covers this entire area. We also get a little bit more chrome for this year. Uh, this little round module right here in the center is for the radar cruise control and the pre-collision warning system. Things have been refreshed a little bit out back, and even though our Grand Cherokee Summit is the V6 model, we have these twin trapezoidal exhaust tips that are well integrated into the rear bumper. Speaking of that rear bumper, because the Grand Cherokee still has towing in mind, you'll find a two inch hitch receiver as well as a seven pin and a four pin trailer wiring harness connector available right there under this little trim panel on the back of your Jeep. There are three different engine options in the Grand Cherokee for 2014. Things start out with this 3.6 liter V6 engine. It's 290 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. There's also a 5.7 liter Hemi engine that produces 360 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. And new for 2014, there is a diesel engine. That's a VM Matori 3 liter turbo diesel, good for 240 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. Now, unlike previous generations of Grand Cherokee, stepping up the model line does not buy you a V8 engine. So that 3.6 liter V6 engine that's under this hood is the same engine you're going to find in every model of Grand Cherokee starting out. The V8 is going to cost you $2,695, and the diesel is going to bump that price up by $4,500 versus this base V6 engine. All three engines are mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission that's been designed by ZF of Germany. Now, ZF makes transmissions for everybody in the luxury set from Audi to BMW, Rolls-Royce, Bentley, Jaguar, etc., and everything in between. So this transmission has an incredible pedigree. If you're a luxury car manufacturer and you don't use a Mercedes automatic transmission, you use a ZF transmission. Now, that transmission sends power to the rear wheels only by default in the Grand Cherokee. All-wheel drive, four-wheel drive is an option. For $2,000, you can add QuadraTrack 1, which is a full-time all-wheel drive system, to the Grand Cherokee Laredo. There's no part-time all-wheel drive system anymore in the Grand Cherokee, so all of these all-wheel drive options operate all the time. QuadraTrack 2 adds a low ratio to that same system, so it doesn't change the way the differentials operate, just adds the low range gear ratio to that transfer case. Now, Overland and Summit models have the Quadra Drive 2 system, that's a $3,000 all-wheel drive option, and that system uses three electronic limited slip differentials located in the front, the center, and the rear of the Grand Cherokee. Those three limited slip differentials allow the car to completely lock the differential drivetrain in this vehicle, so you can either have exactly 25% of the power going to each individual wheel, or in kind of an interesting twist, the system can also shuttle power across like a limited slip differential would. So rather than 25% of the power only going to this wheel, the system can say, you know, half the power that the front axle is getting, I want to send all of that to just this one wheel. As the luxury trim of the Grand Cherokee, the Summit has tires that are designed more for on-road use. So we have 265 50R20 tires up front, and out back. Now these are a little bit lower profile than the standard tires on the Grand Cherokee, but they are a bit better than something like a Ford Explorer or a Nissan Pathfinder for going off-road. They are a little bit wider and they are a little bit higher profile than some of those other options. You really want those higher profile tires when going off-road because you're less likely to bend rims and do a whole bunch of other nasty damage to your wheel. Front seat comfort in the Grand Cherokee is very good. We're in the Summit model, so we get the 14-way power driver and front passenger seats with four-way adjustable lumbar control. We also have a tilt telescoping steering wheel and we have some of the softest leather that's available definitely in this price class, easily in several price classes above it. I do have one complaint, however, that I should mention. Chrysler's latest seat designs mean that the bolstering in this seat makes you feel like you're sitting on the seat rather than in the seat. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but the seat is still very comfortable. There's just not a whole lot of lateral bolstering going on. Now, since we're in the Summit model, these seats are heated and cooled as well. Let's take a closer look at the interior now. Over here we have our four-way manual adjustable headrests. Because we're in the Grand Cherokee Summit model, we get Summit embroidery on the seats. And the color balance this video may be a little bit off just because we're in the shade and the artificial lighting we're using, but this interior is sort of a dark brown. Uh, you can see that the Summit model has the perforated leather seats because we have the heated and cooled seats. Over here on the doors and on the dashboard, you'll notice something interesting, especially for a mass market vehicle 
like the Grand Cherokee, and that is we have a full leather stitched dashboard right here above the real wood trim. Uh, the stitching on this dashboard is excellent. I'm not sure who Chrysler is using to do their dashboards, but the latest Chrysler dashboards in the 300 and the Grand Cherokee are really great looking dashboards. Continuing over, we have a partial wood steering wheel heated in our Summit model, and we have a very rugged stitching going on there. This is a completely new steering wheel designed for 2014. If we zoom out, you can see the controls here. This five-way control controls the seven-inch LCD disco dash there. Right here, we have our voice command button and our phone buttons. And on this side, we have two sets of cruise control buttons. This button arrangement up here controls the regular cruise control, and this button down here controls the radar cruise control. So you can have regular non-radar adaptive cruise control just by hitting this little button and setting your speed, or you can use this button and turn on the adaptive cruise control and then set your distance, and then you use these same buttons to adjust your speed. A major change for 2014 is this 8-inch Uconnect sound system, which we'll go over in greater detail shortly. Uh, below that, you'll find the button bank for the climate control buttons, which are fairly minimalist in this car. You'll also find some harder plastics than you'll find up in the dashboard. They do feel a little bit cheap compared to that stitched leather dashboard. Behind this little cubby, you'll find the auxiliary input. It's a little hard to see in there, but there is a USB port and secure digital card port and a regular stereo mini input as well as a uh, cigarette lighter adapter in there. If we continue down the dashboard, this is our gear shifter. It is sort of a joystick gear shifter. You pull down to go into drive after pushing that little button, and then to return to park, you go all the way back forward, and the shifter always returns to center. We have two large cup holders, and then down here we have our terrain management system. Uh, essentially uh, the same as, as what Land Rover and Range Rover like to use. Uh, electronic buttons for four-wheel drive low, our hill descent and ascent control, our variable height suspension system, and then we can choose our terrain and the car will adjust various systems from the four-wheel drive system to the suspension system to uh, the way that the traction control system behaves based on the condition. Because the Grand Cherokee competes with a wide variety of crossovers, we should look inside this center console because you will notice a difference. Because the Jeep Grand Cherokee is a rear wheel drive based vehicle, that means that the transmission is essentially under this cubby right here, which means this cubby is not as deep as it is in something like an Acura MDX or a Ford Explorer. Uh, there's not quite as much storage room going on right there. It also means if you take a look at this driver's foot well over here, you can see that there's a decent amount of intrusion from that transmission into the foot well area, although this is a great deal better than previous generations of the Grand Cherokee. It doesn't really cause a problem with the foot that's on the accelerator pedal, but there is a little bit less legroom in the driver's side as well as over there on the passenger side. Rear seat comfort in the Grand Cherokee is very good and much better than Grand Cherokee models of the past. We get reclining rear seat backs, which recline from a fairly vertical position to a decidedly comfortable position. Now, the rear seat backs also recline in a manner where the hinge mechanism is low enough in the seat back that it doesn't feel like it's pressing you strangely in the middle of your back. We get a fifth seat, of course. We also get a center armrest with cup holders. And if I move all the way over, this front seat was adjusted for a six foot five passenger we had in the Grand Cherokee, and you can see that over the years the Grand Cherokee has grown, and I still have a decent number of inches of legroom left, even if I'm over here on this other side. Now, this handle that reclines the seat also flips and folds the Grand Cherokee seats in a single motion, which includes that headrest, which is quite nice. And the Grand Cherokee seats now fold completely flat with the cargo area. Rear passengers also have rear air vents, and they can direct the air to their feet or their head, but we don't have a third zone in our climate control system. We do have two USB ports down here, and those can be used to power uh, fairly high draw USB devices. We have a 115 volt power outlet, and since we're in the Summit model, we get heated rear seats as well. The Grand Cherokee scores a solid nine out of 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index, and that's because the Grand Cherokee has grown significantly over the years. This model of Grand Cherokee is closely related to the Mercedes ML, and it's also very closely related to the Dodge Durango. The Dodge Durango is a seven-seat SUV, and those seven seats had to go somewhere. The Durango is a little bit bigger than the Grand Cherokee, but it's not that much bigger, so all that extra room where the Durango would sit two extra seats is now in the cargo area in the Grand Cherokee. That means we can fit quite a number of these large roller bags back here. Since we're in the Summit, we have this Alcatara headliner. The truck is very nicely furnished as well, and we have a power trunk hatch. With the rear seats folded, you can see we have an awful lot of cargo room in the Grand Cherokee. Over here we have the subwoofer that's standard in our Grand Cherokee Summit. These are grocery bag holders. We have a 12 volt power outlet, and this is a little icon indicating that this only operates when the ignition key is on. If we go over to the other side, we have 
Chrysler's uh, built-in flashlight, something that they love to do. It is a little bit of a handy feature if you find yourself hunting for a flashlight. And under this hatch here, we have a full-size spare tire and the jack and a little bit of extra cargo room. This is not a matching spare tire in the Grand Cherokee, but it is a full-size spare. Thanks to that eight-speed automatic transmission, acceleration in the 2014 model of the Grand Cherokee is almost a full second faster in our testing than it was in the 2013 model with the old five-speed Mercedes automatic. That's because this car can keep the engine at its maximum power band for acceleration. So when you're flooring it from a stop, you go rapidly up to its red line around 6,500 RPM, and then the engine stays between 5,000 and 6,500 RPM the entire time you're accelerating because those gears are so close together. It's quite different than the old five-speed where it really dropped way out of its power band as you continue to accelerate. That 0 to 60 time compares very favorably with the likes of the Ford Explorer and the Nissan Pathfinder, but the quarter mile is a bit slower than those other vehicles because of the weight of the Grand Cherokee. As I said, it weighs about 5,000 pounds in V6 trim. It's about 200 pounds heavier for the V8 and you know almost 400 pounds heavier for the diesel. And that affects everything from the performance to the handling in the Grand Cherokee, both on and off-road. We're going to talk about the off-road later, so we'll just focus about on-road manners right now. That's been something that's been changing a lot for the Grand Cherokee since it's been introduced. All the Jeeps used to have solid axles, and then Jeep has gone away from those over time, basically because of the market. Everybody who buys a crossover or a sport utility vehicle is demanding better on-road manners than they had in the past. When these things first came out, people assumed that they were going to be off-roading, but then as more people started to buy them because they were fashionable and fashion statements rather than that off-road vehicle that people really wanted, uh, the on-road manners had to you know, come in there somewhere. And the competition has pretty much all moved to a front-wheel drive biased crossover platform. The Pathfinder was the latest one to transfer. Of course, the Explorer did that a few years ago. That being said, this doesn't handle that much worse than something like a Ford Explorer or a Pathfinder. It's definitely competitive, and that's just a testament to the amount of engineering work that Chrysler has done on this Jeep Grand Cherokee to get it to do what it can do on the road. A word on that transmission, it really defines the way the Grand Cherokee feels because this feels completely different from the 2013 model and drivetrain wise, all that Chrysler did is change that transmission. They went from the five speed Mercedes transmission and the six speed Chrysler transmission to this eight speed ZF sourced unit. Now that transmission has an awful lot to do with the feel on the road because of the shift times and just the way that it shifts. Shifts in this eight speed are very fast and they're very crisp. Now going up something like a shallow mountain incline on a freeway, for instance, if you are on a mountain highway, um, it's not unusual for this transmission to need to drop two gears for this V6 model to maintain about 70 miles an hour or so. But the way that this does it is completely different from the old five-speed automatic, which only had to drop maybe one gear to stay up that same incline. The other one, you really slowed down an awful lot before the transmission shifted. You had to put your foot in the throttle an awful lot more. This transmission is more willing to shift, but it's more seamless when it does it. So the shifts are very fast, very crisp, and they're almost unnoticeable on freeway overpasses and inclines like that where the transmission does need to downshift to keep you going in the V6. If you have the diesel, it's not as necessary because of all that torque, and even the V8 with more low-end torque doesn't seem to need to shift quite as often. It really makes the V6 a better choice for 2014 than it was in 2013, and I think because it's so much lighter than the other options and we get 24 miles per gallon on the highway, it would be my engine of choice. About that fuel economy, we have been averaging 19.9 miles per gallon over about 650 miles or so of very mixed driving in the Grand Cherokee. That's a decent amount better than any Grand Cherokee that we've ever had before. Four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, it didn't matter. Never had a Grand Cherokee that averaged nearly 20 miles per gallon. And of course, the V6 model sucks down regular unleaded while the V8 sucks down mid-grade. We're out here in the Redwood Forest taking the Grand Cherokee Summit on a trail that's probably just about as difficult as anybody that owns a $50,000 SUV will ever travel on, mostly because, you know, you can probably scrape up your car pretty badly on some of these tree branches. Um, but this car's also a little bit heavy for true rock crawling, so I don't think I would take my Grand Cherokee on rocks. Uh, definitely not with these stock tires either. That is also a problem with SUVs, uh, roadworthy SUVs and off-roading, is that the on-road rubber just isn't designed for true off-roading work. It means that you can get stuck a little bit easily in this Grand Cherokee, and we just got stuck uh, a short while ago for about five minutes or so because we went over a log. Didn't hurt anything on the car, of course. It wasn't a log that was big enough to high center the Grand Cherokee or anything. It's just that these road tires couldn't climb back over the log once we got 
on one side of the log, we couldn't back up and get back out over it. We're going down this trail in off-road one because off-road two may give you a few extra inches of height, but it also means that your suspension is stuck at the very bottom of its travel. So if you're crawling over rocks or things that are very, you know, different in camber from one wheel to the other, you don't have much suspension travel left. So the, the feel is, is honestly pretty bad because, you know, you, you end up lifting one wheel off the ground like that and the other wheel just bams at the bottom of its suspension top. And that's really not a very pleasant feeling whether you're on-road or off-road. Even though we don't have true off-roading tires in this car, even if we did, it wouldn't be as good off-road as something that's lighter. And that's really important to keep in mind because a 5,000 pound SUV is just awfully heavy. And uh, you know, some of these trails that we've taken this Grand Cherokee down, we didn't have a problem taking a Patriot down uh, just because it's about 2,000 pounds lighter. Uh, can someone look over there and tell me how close we are? are we? As I was saying, <laughs> now that we have negotiated a log, um, the Patriot did better in certain off-road situations than this Grand Cherokee did, even though it doesn't have a locking center differential or locking front or rear differentials either for that matter. And that's mostly because it's about 2,000 pounds lighter nearly than this Grand Cherokee. And that makes a big difference when you're off-road. It's a lot easier to get stuck in a heavy SUV in the mud or in sand or in a wide variety of situations than it is in a lighter SUV. And uh, even though a lighter SUV may not have the fancy all-wheel drive system like this car does, then it, it just doesn't matter quite as much as the weight, ultimately. I mean, this, this all-wheel drive system will get you out of certain sticky situations better than anything else will, uh, very much like a Land Rover or a Land Cruiser would. But the weight is a problem. The independent suspension is also a little bit of a problem in certain circumstances, as well as ground clearance. The 8-speed automatic helps the V6 Grand Cherokee for 2014 be two tenths of a second faster to 60 than the 2013 V8 model. Helps the V8 model be considerably faster as well, but it also helps out here on the trail. With a wider variety of gears to choose from, the Grand Cherokee never feels out of breath or out of sorts or just lacking that perfect gear for the situation. It's pretty easy for this transmission to find the right gear for any incline, any task that you throw at it, any obstacle that we've come across. The 8-speed automatic also allowed Chrysler to swap out the 30 to 1 low speed ratio transfer case that was used in the 2013 Grand Cherokee for a 44 to 1 unit in this new 2014 model, which gives you an awful lot lower ratio for your rock crawling adventures if you seriously wanted to take your $50,000 SUV rock crawling, of course. Pricing for the 2014 Grand Cherokee starts at $28,795 for the V6 two-wheel drive Grand Cherokee Laredo and tops out at just under $56,000 for the fully loaded diesel four-wheel drive Grand Cherokee Summit model. Now, if you're interested in that V8 engine, the first point of entry is the $39,485 limited model in two-wheel drive. Of course, you have to add about $2,000 to that all-wheel drive system. If you want the diesel engine because you're after that 30 miles per gallon advertised on the highway, then that's going to cost you a minimum of $41,290 because the limited model is the first model you can get the diesel engine in. And that would of course be the two wheel drive as well. Our tester here is an almost fully loaded Grand Cherokee Summit. V6, 4x4, rang in at $50,995. So if the Grand Cherokee isn't quite as good on the road as a regular crossover vehicle like a Ford Explorer or a Nissan Pathfinder, and it's not quite as good off-road as something like a Jeep Wrangler, then what good is the Grand Cherokee? Well, obviously it's the fact that we can have a conversation about on-road driving dynamics as well as off-road driving dynamics in a current SUV. And the landscape has really changed over the last few years. So you really can't take your Pathfinder or your Ford Explorer or any of those other crossover vehicles real off-roading like you could with the Grand Cherokee. So it is the last true SUV left in America that's a mid-size format like this. It's not too big, doesn't have seven seats, etc. It also is one of the only mid-size SUVs in America that can tow a trailer like this because standard towing in the two-wheel drive version of the V6 is pretty decent. Our four-wheel drive V6 can tow 6,200 pounds. Maximum towing capacity with the diesel and the V8 is 7,400 pounds in two-wheel drive mode and 7,200 pounds in four-wheel drive mode. That's a good thing for me because I've actually been contemplating replacing my own SUV and there's nothing else on the market that can tow the trailer I already own in this five-seat mid-sized market other than the Grand Cherokee. 
Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure and click that little link down below and subscribe. Go ahead and comment on this video. Tell us what you liked, what you didn't like. And if you'd like to see specific reviews or other features on our channel, then go ahead and send us a message on YouTube and tell us what those are. That 8-speed automatic has also allowed Chrysler to change the transfer case from last year's 30 to 1 ratio to a 44 to 1 rock crawl ratio, which is significantly better. off-road two mode right now and this is when you can really see in roads like this this is not a horribly difficult path that we're going down here but it's really obvious that we're at the bottom end of the suspension travel because we're in the maximum height to crawl over some of those logs and it, it really makes the the feel in these trails a little peculiar if I'm honest yeah it goes bang 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 you can really seriously hear that Let's see how our approach and departure angles are here. If we climb back up on this road, there we go, and we made it.